In this video, I'm going to go over some highlights of what's coming up to Unity in 2020. More stable releases, improved visuals and performance, tons of quality of life improvements, and lots and lots more. Let's begin! Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this channel is all about helping you learn how to make your own games with in depth tutorials made by a professional indie game developer. So if you find the video helpful, consider subscribing. Okay, so here I will cover my highlights of what was recently announced for Unity in 2020 in three different places. First, there's the Unity 2020.1 beta that just came out, then the blog post talking about the state of Unity, and lastly, the roadmap talk that premiered earlier this week. All of the links are in the description in case you want to go through them yourself. There is still one more roadmap talk coming up in a few days, entirely focused on multiplayer and live games. Also, right now is your last chance to get the Grow Your Skills Mega Bundle. It contains $1,000 worth of assets for 90% off. Lots of these assets are extremely cool, and this is an excellent deal. The bundle ends in just a few days, so check it out. The link in the description is also an affiliate link, so if you pick up anything through there, you'll also be helping out the channel. This video's Patreon sponsor is Bad Adventurer. Bad Adventurer is a game development duo currently working on their first game, Wayfarer's Edge. It's a RPG focused on exploring and settling unknown frontier lands in a low fantasy and wild west theme. Check them out at badadventurer.com. Thank you to the Patreon sponsor and thank you to these awesome supporters for making this video possible. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. So, a couple of days ago the new version of 2020.1 just entered beta. This is the first of the new release cycle. Previously, you had three tech releases and then the long-term support release. Now for 2020, it will be just two tech releases plus the LTS. So this should allow for more time in alpha and beta phases, which will result in more stable releases. They mentioned that their focus this year is more stable releases validated with real-world productions so you can be confident to use the tools in your own projects. So this is excellent news. Instead of getting tons of new features in preview, this year you can expect more features to be stable and fully released. Previously, there were also preview packages being released very early on in the process. While this was great because it gave you a sneak preview of what's to come, it also caused some confusion and instability. So now they're reducing the number of preview packages and keeping experimental packages limited to just focus groups. So this should ensure that, in general, Unity should be more stable across the board. Also, I love the new format of the roadmap talk. It's split up into three separate areas, release, pre-release, and in development. So this should help clear some confusion regarding what is currently fully released and what is being pre-released as a preview package. In order to validate the tools with real-world products, Unity has been doing more complete demos. Previously, Unity has tested their releases with the FPS sample and the Megacity demo. Currently, there's the DOTS sample, which is the testing ground for the DOTS netcode, DOTS animation, and DOTS physics and they're currently in development of a large-scale open-world shooter to ensure everything works at scale with AAA quality. So this is how they are validating all the tools they're working on by making sure they work in a real-world scenario. The Universal Render Pipeline now supports camera stacking, which is awesome news, although it doesn't yet work with the 2D renderer. The development continues to reach feature parity with the built-in renderer. The goal is to end up making the Universal the default render pipeline. The High Definition Render Pipeline will also continue getting improvements with better performance and stability. Related to that is the Hybrid Renderer, which has just recently been updated to version 2.0. The Hybrid Renderer uses Burst to bring performance improvements across the board. So they showed that with 100,000 dynamic entities, they went from 37 milliseconds with version 1 to just 6.9 milliseconds with version 2. So that's an insane 5x improvement on something that was already very fast. So rendering as a whole continues to be faster and faster. 2D has also been steadily improving with each release. Lately with 2D lights, sprite shape, PSD importing, and tons more, it's really great to see all the love given to 2D over these past releases. In 2020.1, there's more improvements to 2D physics along with a new physics demo project. You also have the ability to refresh physics at the same rate as rendering for smoother physics and visuals. And in the future, the goal is to continue improving on performance and workflows. They're also currently working on a new and improved 2D template that combines all of those awesome 2D packages. So that should really help out when starting a new project to have instant access to try out all of these awesome 2D features. Visual scripting is currently in development. 
I covered it quite a while ago, but since then they've been working on a massive update which should be coming out relatively soon. I'm very interested to look at the new update and will definitely be doing a video as soon as it's out. Several very interesting AI based tools. I haven't touched any of these, but the concept behind all of them is extremely impressive. First there's a tool to use AI to easily generate and modify textures. Then using the cloud and machine learning to test your game on a massive scale and continued improvement on ML agents by making those tools easier to use. So this is a really exciting area that will definitely be extremely important in the future, so it's great to see Unity build out all these awesome tools. There's a bunch of small but awesome quality of life improvements. First, when you copy some game objects and then right click to paste, you will now have two options, paste and paste as child. It's a tiny thing, but it's really useful. Whenever I copy paste game objects, I always have to stop and think for a second if it will end up as a sibling or a child. Another small thing is dragging to swap the position of array elements and folders for the hierarchy. Now this to me is extremely awesome and most people probably missed it. Right now the only way to organize your scene is using game objects as containers, which has a slight performance cost and can confuse you with the local transform values. So being able to create just an empty folder just to organize things is going to be a huge help. Then there's generic splines. These look great and apparently can be used with just about anything, so it should really be a very versatile new tool. Regarding animation, Kinematica is still in development and it always impresses me when I see it. In case you don't know, that's a AI based animation system. So you just move the character and it automatically reacts to the environment, so it looks super cool. Then more in improved animation tools to make a really solid animation workflow. Also work is continuing on Dots Animation. Again, it promises extreme performance while being flexible and easy to use. It's still very much in development, but the future looks very bright. It's already being used in the dot sample and will be used in the open world game they're currently working on. Upcoming is the ability to open a prefab in context. Right now, if you open a prefab for editing, it will open it in its own scene. So in the future, you'll be able to open it directly in your scene. So this should really help when you're trying to edit something relative to other things in your scene. And in general, the editor should be more performant in 2020.1. The profiler is continuing to get tons of improvements. You can now run it as a standalone desktop app, so this should really help reduce the noise when testing your games. The memory profiler is also getting tons of improvements, and you have some nice visual flow events showcasing what jobs are being scheduled. The previously named UI elements is now renamed to UI Toolkit, and it's going into a package. This is a very interesting feature that I've looked into but I haven't covered in a video yet. It allows you to create UI in a very nice way by separating hierarchy and styling from logic. It uses a very interesting subset of CSS in order to localize everything. The UI Builder is also a very visual tool for creating the UI. So when combined with vector graphics, this should make your UI work on just about any resolution and any aspect ratio. So it all looks very promising and I look forward to covering it in a future video. Cinemachine continues getting more improvements. I just recently started using it. I made a video covering it and then I made a game that actually uses it. So it really is extremely easy to use, so it's great to see it continue to get improvements and come out of preview. Currently in development is a DOTS version of Cinemachine, which again promises extreme performance. In this demo, each void has a virtual camera, so with that many voids, you can see it's insane performance. Now in terms of lighting, the GPU light mapper is currently in development. I've just recently made a 3D game, and in it I had to play around with light baking, and it's insane just how much faster the GPU light mapper is. It bakes at literally 100 times faster than the CPU light mapper. So this will be a huge help to cut down on iteration times. They will also provide out-of-the-box lighting presets, which will be a great starting point to then tweak to get the perfect lighting for your project. Project Tiny continues being worked on. This is a fascinating piece of tech focused on trying to make games with the smallest size possible. It's all dots based, which makes it extremely performant. So it should be excellent for making tiny little web and mobile games. Definitely look forward to some videos on Tiny as it gets closer to release. There are tons of improvements coming related to multiplayer and connected games. Lots of tools are already available and being used in release games. For example, Vivox, the voice service, is already being used in Apex Legends. There's Multiplay for hosting your games, Delta DNA for analytics, lots of .NET code improvements, and lots, lots more. 
They will all be covered in detail in the Multiplayer and Live Games Roadmap Talk on April 1st. Alright, so that about covers my personal highlights of what's coming to Unity in the future. These are just the things that I personally find most exciting, but there's tons more stuff coming, so check out the two blog posts and watch the complete roadmap talk linked in the description. There's also an awesome Q&A thread on the forums with tons more information. I've been using Unity since 2012 and it really just keeps getting better and better. It's already an excellent engine and the future looks very exciting with development of DOTs, new multiplayer and netcode, AI tools, and so on. So let's all keep making awesome stuff and best of luck in your own projects. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. Subscribe to the channel for more Unity content, post any questions you have in the comments, and I'll see you next time.